How is everybody today? Sorry, a little change of pace from epoxy. We're cutting some potatoes up. We're doing a little barbecue here for the office. So thank you guys for joining. This will probably be really boring. I don't know, unless you want to watch a badass cook. This is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably epically fail, but I'm sometimes, sometimes I get this actually as one of my favorite meals done pretty good. I do like potatoes and I love steak. And we have some big bone in ribeye tomahawks today we're gonna cook. So, we'll try. We'll see just how many we can go. I know, dude, it did feel like camping. Like my little girl likes. Hotel camping, Daddy? Are we going to have a pool when we go camping? Uh, just a little Airbnb. I'm not, I'm probably like, it's sort of tough to make sure a toddler's fed the whole time and around a fireplace and I don't know. Oh, I don't I didn't really know. I was worried about weather. What's up? Anybody, if you're in town, stop by for the barbecue. I will, I have more meat than everybody in town can eat. I have a bunch of SRF bone-in wagyu. Do a little dance. <laughs> Get down tonight. I don't know how to do the dances, guys. That looked just more in, that looked more inappropriate, but I was trying to do the dance they do. <laughs> Get down tonight. Make some love. So, if you do this and then you salt and pepper your potatoes, oh, they take up flavor so nice. And then I spray each side with um, avocado oil. And if I do these on time, I'll even stick, drip um, steak juice through them. And you'll have these really good steak juice, grilled, kind of opened up fried potatoes. I even do this with hot dogs. I know. I do, do you guys want to know where I bought this cutting board? At like, not, it wasn't Walmart. It was like City Market. It was City Market. So yeah, the cheapest cutting board. I was like, I need one right now. <laughs> like literally. The dude at the office that probably has like six in the other room, and I went and grabbed one at City Market. That's, oh gosh, that's literally the crappiest thing. But I would have wanted to take it home and wash it well. and I could have sprayed it down with alcohol. But I knew these people online would be like, oh my gosh. I caught him. He didn't wash that cutting board. How is everybody today? Dude, my, I get to see my little girl again. My little girl went and spent two nights with my sister, and man, I started missing her. But she's coming back. She's going to join us for this barbecue. If I cook steak, she'll show up. Remember guys, you can still ask me anything you ever want to ask me. So just because I'm cooking doesn't mean I can't cook epoxy or answer epoxy questions. And yeah, this is my ghetto little sticks. These are stacks of mixing sticks for epoxy that I made, I made my little spacers with. Chopsticks work really well, especially if you have like the nice square ones. But remember then you're gonna want a really flat, flat knife to do this because you're going to be so close to cutting all the way through the potato and keep them like crisscrossed and then even if you do cut all the way through there's enough diagonal in here to where the, you can actually like fan a really thin potato right out um, to where you can actually like see between it it makes a cool pattern I don't know I'm just chopping them I'm going to make I'm cutting like a hash pattern into these potatoes. Then I'm going to salt them and spray oil on them, toss them up on the grill. I'm going to grill my steak here in a second. I've never actually been videotaped cooking, so this makes me a little nervous. It was not my idea. I'm making a barbecue for my people at the office and some people that are stopping by. And, um, and then they were like, we should go live. They're talking about trends we need to do, guys, but I don't know every trend. All right, there we go. 
questions answers trowel uh rolling before a notch using a notch trowel yeah that you you could probably get a really nice traver um we did that um linear travertine the other day just like that that's a really good one we actually poured the almond down um and then right after we poured almond didn't we just um didn't we just spray all our colors and then use a notch trowel right or, and drag it through the top and then that's one of the nicest travertines <laughs> i've ever seen and it was so simple to do so can i grab some gloves I'm excited to see what you do with it, Sarah. All right. I have to drink coffee. Now, to the, my favorite part here. Yes. That. We're gonna cut some really good. This is very top of the line bone in ribeye. Because we do our epoxy kind of like, we do our steak like we do our epoxy. Perfect. And if you guys were here, you can have some steak and I'd cook you some. I think maybe next week we'll do a bunch of Wagyu. I have them cutting up a whole quarter round of Wagyu for me for next week, so. Sarah said we're building a barn dominion and doing the floors brown and gold pots. Sarah, that is badass. I'm excited to see what you do with this. Um, when are you starting on that barn dominion? I think everybody in the world should just only want a barn dominion. One of the best seasonings you'll ever get in the world. It's this right here. It's called butter blend. So amazing works amazing on potatoes amazing on steak and then some people you might just some people just like the old simple salt and pepper on their steak too so i'm going to start out with that actually before i go all crazy what are you guys grateful for and where are you guys watching from we're in grand junction colorado and as you can see when it's like 33 degrees in the morning we get all excited and make a barbecue so that yesterday was it snowing or the day before it like snowed on us but dude i saw i saw the chance of sunny skies and i am stoked for that so Hell yeah, we're outside. Where are you guys watching from and how is your weather? Somebody tell me the juiciest fact. I want to know somebody's... What do we, what do we want to know? I want, to, I want you guys to spill the nastiest tea you guys can spill to me. Are you guys getting blinded? Sorry, I mean, I would be in a bikini, but that's usually not till later in the season. And this winter, I did not work for my summer body, let me tell you. I ate steak for my summer body. Ohio, good job. Florida, I'm sure it's beautiful there. Where at? Where are you getting snow? New Mexico? Holy smokes, I am. New Mexico, I hope you get summer soon too. Heavy salt. They got tech questions. Is it anything we can say online? It's just about acid etching and acid staining. Acid etching and acid staining. Joe, our tech manager, we're going over some questions. What is it? Um, what is basically acid etching and acid staining? Can we? Yeah, it's staining, it's done water. with a bunch of water. So. Um, and then they neutralize it with um, vinegar and water. So we're usually really against it just because we don't want to put more moisture in a slab before we pour. So that's why we don't acid etch concrete prior to pouring floors, guys, because we're trying to extract all moisture and all acid etching does is um, put moisture in the slab. Not to mention, you can get um, dirt and grease out with your alcohol just as well. And it's also extracting uh, moisture at the same time. But yeah. Yes. How long does that have to settle before you think we can go on top of it? Um, if they did do it? With a clear coat, yeah. If they did acid etch it? Well, if they acid stained. Oh, acid stained it? Depends on how much moisture down. Just make sure they get to a really low moisture content. Have them do a patch and make sure it doesn't catch uh, moisture in the corner for like three days straight. 
and then oh, maybe do the alcohol afterwards just to extract moisture just like you would normally okay. but you can't wipe it too much because acid stains you'll you'll really yeah. disturb them and smear them yeah would you do that technique that we had done before with the little plastic you like put that little dome on top to see uh-huh yep right? one square foot with um like some really good tape frog tape or i mean um um gorilla tape or such just so you guys know, Joe's the smartest tech person in the industry. That's why when you guys call, when you guys call and you get amazing help, a big reason is because people like Joe constantly, constantly educate themselves and they go on jobs and they learn stuff nonstop. And look at Lily. Lily's starting out right here too. And Anna's an OG that's done it forever. Everybody else, you guys realize everybody here is prettier than me, right? You know that? Yeah. That's pretty, I could, dude, I could be in an ugly freaking building and still that would be true. I should be, you know what? I, sh I identify as beautiful and you guys can't do a damn thing about it. I identify as beautiful and I'm not going to accept anybody saying I'm not. Joe, is this warm enough to be outside later? Are you warm enough when you're out here later? Am I, am I warm enough? Yes. I can't tell if I'm getting used to this or if this is actually... Well, you're moving around and... What is the temp here? It's kind of warm. Yeah. Think it's supposed to be low 40s? Yeah. It's like... Yeah, how warm does it have to be in your state before you barbecue outside? Tyson said, is that bearded for... Stack here, so... Kind of sad. Um, Oklahoma, cold and windy. Windy. Cold and windy? Daniel said, I'm looking at the state. Uh, thank you, Daniel. I totally agree. Okay. Now, my stupid little trick, some spray avocado oil. I just want to keep all my moisture in this steak. And I like to spray the avocado oil on here. And mop it into plenty of the seasoning because I kind of like a crust on some of mine. And these are so thick, it can really take a lot of that, and it's going to be just fine. Now you have a pretty moist steak right there. A 500 degree grill. There we go for the start. Now I need to pop out of the head. Now I'm just gonna salt my potatoes a little bit, but I'm also gonna do the same bearded butcher blend on there. And if your salt's bouncing off, missed it was. That was Cedar River Farms, the SRF um, bone-in Wagyu ribeye or something like that. Say what? Um, in a little while. I just want to add a little salt to just one side of this before I do this, because sometimes I don't think this bearded butcher blends quite enough salt for a thick potato like this. And can also make your potatoes look pretty darn good like this. I cut little hash marks in them. And... How's everyone today? What are you all grateful for? You guys want me to cook this in your next class when you show up for a class? Who wants me to cook steak and potatoes for them and maybe some corn? And... I know your moms do. But do you want me to cook that for you? You don't have to call me stepdad or anything. Sorry. No, no, I don't. I probably should never joke on TikTok or anywhere else. I'll never do stand-up, but I've always wanted to do stand-up. I just need to be funny first. 
to more people than just myself and my best friend. Yeah, I'd be the obnoxious Bob Ross if everything I ever felt like saying came out truly. All right. Or Oregon coast, 39. Mm, that's cold to 39, but sunny. That's sounding pretty good. Uh, best way to clean concrete, just grind your highs, uh, fill your lows. Um, and if I'm taking care of oil or anything like that, I'll use a little bit of xylene. And if, you, um, if I'm using, um, if I'm worried about moisture, I just use alcohol to extract that. One, uh, one casualty of the war there. This little man didn't fare too well. He's got to go to the VA and get fixed up. They're, they're going to talk him into saying he's mental or something. How is everybody? Don't forget. I'm going to do that in a little while so I don't burn her stuff. And all I'm going to do with this corn, yeah, maybe I'm ghetto. But yes, maybe I do. Just salt and oil everything. That's gonna be great. I'm gonna put those on in a little bit. Give it a minute. Sheet rock and mud. Sheet rock and mud and dust stuck to stuck on new concrete. Um, try sanding it. It's really sad when drywallers leave all that because um, obviously it cleans up with water really easily, but then you want to extract that water from the slab. So if you do use water, just do it about a week prior to actually, um, you know, and get, then get the water out of there and then spray your alcohol down on the slab. And one thing people don't realize is alcohol is a really good adsorbent to moisture. So it doesn't just mix with moisture, but it'll actually pull moisture out of a slab. So when you spray your slab with, um, with alcohol, um, that pulls any moisture right to the surface and it helps it creates it uh, makes it flash off and evaporate really quickly and then what we do here a lot of times is we'll take our skim coat with with our we have an epoxy called outdoor flex we use a lot for primes everywhere um, and we'll mix 10% acetone with that and do a really thin skim coat out of that and we'll um, create kind of a hydrostatic vapor barrier with that and it makes an amazing prime coat so um, definitely call our office and the links in the bio if you want um, if you're doing something a little more unique or difficult like that so, I love those questions too, by the way, guys. Say what? Yeah, the, the question I just answered? Yeah. yeah, make sure you call the office or something or let us know what kind of floor you're doing because I think we recognize your name and, and you just made a purchase. So call our office if you have any questions about that too and we'll help you walk you through any of that. So and you'll even be lucky enough probably to talk to Joe or one of the cool people. So here we go. Cross-contamination of? What are you guys worried about cross-contamination? My potatoes that are on a 500 degree grill? That's why I'm not feeding them to you. you notice that? Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for letting us know and thanks for watching the live, guys. We really appreciate that. Say what? What about? I have secrets to talk about. Oh, your username, MSN. Thank you, dude. We do recognize you. I thought sometimes we have sneaky secrets, and everybody knows, but I don't always know. So I was trying to be all super low key. And right now, somewhere last night, I bought barbecue tongs just for a moment such as this. And now what do you think it is that I'm not finding? And it would be my freaking barbecue tongs.
forgot all my stuff in the back seat of the truck. I knew I was just looking in the wrong truck. So guys, I'm gonna do a sticker on my truck. I came up with a really good sticker idea um, because I always drive like, I always drive a lifted Ford Raptor or like a Roush. I always have these really douchey trucks. And right now I have like this big lifted Ford F-250 Power Stroke Diesel and I actually used it for filming a documentary so I kind of needed it to be big and douchey. Um, and now I have a TRX as well, but I want to put a sticker in the back of each truck that says my other truck's a douche truck too. So, just because that's all I have. So, where's the green beard? The green beard? You know what? I do have a green shirt on today, guys. I do have a green shirt under. Oh, well, and my pants are on. Well, I was trying to show you my green shirt. I have a green t shirt on underneath, and I'm not very good on film, if you haven't noticed. Now, I'm sure it's time. Oh yeah, I'm gonna leave them a little bit longer, just a little more directness there. Remember guys, any Q&A you want, here. Levy trying to not open a grill five more times than he should. Maybe this thing taking off, I don't know. Hmm. Watch Levi try to remove. Remember guys, I, I know more about epoxy than cooking, but I am a decent cook, so. Come to a class, let me know what you guys would want me to barbecue if you show up to our class. Because we usually take you out to a really nice restaurant every day. But I do believe I'm gonna have one day of barbecuing in the future, just to try it and see what you, if you guys like it, so. Let me know what you guys would want to see us barbecue. Say what? Um, it depends on how they want it. I'm running at 500 degrees, so I'll probably do about 15 minutes on the first side and about 30 or 40 on the second side. to have some like don't you guys think we have to have some like cheesy man bread right you know what we're still at work though big buck i like the idea dude but we're still at work where's my other girl i disappeared one of these are these stacked they are stacked <laughs> don't ever say sorry we have all the way more skilled people here than me guys they're just being nice Some garlic naan bread. So that's get this. Right. That's none your business. None your, none your damn business. <laughs> none your business. I like that a lot. All right, I'm just leaving this here pre prepped because I'm like really impatient. And this is why I'm not very good at grilling because now I have to sit here and stare at this. And I feel like I should be doing something different with my time. Oh. oh. You know, one time I allowed shots for like somebody's birthday at lunch and we had this really cool, really nice special guy that was at work that probably should never have had a shot. It probably like broke his 30 year truce or something he'd had with the devil. And um, yeah, it, he was like, oh, I'm good with one. And then we saw him over at, we had an actual huge bar, but we didn't actually know alcohol. It was just something because we, we build out all kinds of crazy stuff in our offices. And we see him behind the bar with the only little bottle of alcohol that was supposed to be for like 40 employees. And I think he was trying to pound the rest of it. And I was like, well, that was a horrible idea to let shots at lunch. So, so now we don't do alcohol. An epoxy countertop that's food safe? Yeah, and I mean, I, that's a loaded question. And I wish that our FDA and the EPA and all these these the regulatory agencies that actually are supposed to keep us safe, I wish they actually cared about safety, um, but they really don't. So unfortunately, all kinds of companies can advertise that their ingredients fall within what's called the food compliance list, as do all of ours. But most companies never really go above and beyond, and they can really lie quite a bit about what's in their epoxies. And one thing that's kind of sad when you're looking at um, epoxies that are supposedly food safe is 
Um, there's been a lot of, what are the, when you go to Congress and you try to petition them, what do you, lobbyists, lobbyists have been there um, to Congress to petition for three different major chemical companies to sell their chemicals and to be able to inject those into most plastics and whatnot. And unfortunately, um, because we allow lobbyists, we've started allowing a lot of really unhealthy chemicals and whatnot um, to be put into epoxies. So, uh, and they can put up to 3% of it without disclosing it to you. So the company can say, all of our ingredients fall within the food safety list because they're not actually telling you about the other 3%. But 3% of a product can be a lot by volume, um, especially when you have really highly carcinogenic um, properties um, in some of it. And the product we actually pour generally in our class, our main countertop product, is the first ever non-hazardous, fully non-hazardous epoxy in the world where we removed um, all of the known harmful ingredients and it took us years to make it and it was actually a much clearer it's a much clearer much harder epoxy than most and it's kind of funny that most people don't realize that the trick to our really good epoxy is the fact that it is healthier so i'm really excited that people actually care about health lately too so oh muchas gracias por tu tiempo and i'm guessing that was in spanish was that spanish French. If it was French, wah wah wee wee, wah wah woo wee. I've seen Borat. I don't even think that's French. I've seen Inglorious Bastards, and that happens in Paris. But I have not seen a lot else. But thank you. And if you're watching from France, God bless you, man. I hope you guys are going through a lot right now. I went to Thanksgiving a few years ago to Paris, took my kids there to the Eiffel Tower for Thanksgiving. So it was a very fun time. Okay, let's see. I'm getting really impatient, and I want to flip the damn meat. I can't keep my hands off my meat. You guys know how that is. Mm, sorry. That's me that's me being a premature griller. The super impatience of Levi. You know, it is 430 degrees. I guarantee you we could run inside and do something really fun with you guys. And I could still be out here. Just, you know, I'm a dad and I cook all the time dinner for my kids or breakfast for my kids while I'm doing 20 other things. So here, we'll go do something fun while this burns and we'll see if I'm the most horrible multitasker and if I don't just ruin all our food. Did we pour glitter yesterday? Oh, yes, dude, guys. Well, I'll, I'll do a video on to show you guys this, but I just dumped a, a bag of glitter, just a little line of glitter out onto the dry floor, and then I just took the leaf blower and blew it out across the floor to, like, to create like a faded glitter look. Kind of cool. I've never really actually done that, but I, I made an accident one time where it looked cool like that, so I was trying to see if I could do it on purpose, and it kind of worked out. So Some of the weird, fun things we do here. All right, guys. We did have, what was the simple sample we were being asked to do in the last few days? We're gonna see, guys. I'm do something just really fun and really small. I'm gonna do something fun for my little girl. What colors are in viola? for that. All right, and we're going to mix this just how I would mix it on a job.
You know how in class I make you guys slow down and mix by hand? That's so you don't get bad habits and do things like I do. But every once in a while I do mix with a drill. I like to get my initial mix done kind of quickly and then make sure you don't let this spin between your feet or you'll have epoxy everywhere. And you don't want excessive air in there. So, I mean, you can do this a little bit, but if, if I was to spin this as fast as I could, I would just have a frothy mess, which this already is way too fast and I'm breaking every rule, but we're still gonna get out there and cook steak. Dude, thank you guys. Thanks for watching, though. Then... Oh, that ain't my little cups, is it now? All right, I'm gonna grab my colors here. Say what? You know what? Thank you for the compliment. We do do a lot of insane, but let me tell you, I do a lot of really ugly stuff too that I just don't show you guys. Because sometimes the guy that's holding the camera, Michael here, is really nice and he doesn't show off the just straight garbage that I produce. So. He's like, hmm, that, we'll just make sure that disappears before Levi shows up and sees it. He mercifully throws him in the dumpster. Well, if you were to cut on any countertop, I would recommend against it, even granite and whatnot. And I actually started out in the industry, the countertop industry, doing granite countertops and tile. Um, and I don't ever recommend, even if it doesn't damage the countertop as easily, you can still damage granite and whatnot that's resin polished. Um, the cool thing with this is, is at least you could polish this back out. Um, and I have used it to cut on. I just, I try not to excessively cut on a countertop that's epoxy because it really doesn't do you any favors. So, you know what, that's way too much epoxy in this one. I'm not gonna do very much accent, guys. I'm gonna do two very small accent cups and then two just other different colors and a big clear. So I'm gonna put pearl in my mane. I don't want a ton of pearl, not a ton. And then do a little bit of trans blue. It looks very pearlescent. Trans blue is very, very, very pearlescent too, unless it's over like a darker color. So you'll only see the translucent colors when they're on a darker background. But then I'm gonna do a little bit of burgundy and some bronze. I do hope you all are having an amazing day today. Where are you guys watching from? We are in Western Colorado here. And we do classes here once a month. I am trying to multitask on a barbecue outside right now, so I'll try not to let this totally get out of hand before I go out there and mess up, mess up my steaks. Oh, okay, there's some. Louisville, Kentucky. What's it like out there, Kentucky? That's a lot of outdoor stuff out there. On Looks like I have not. That's a state I have not spent time in, but looks beautiful. Northern, Northern the UP. Ooh, that's a rough place. If you're surviving the UP right now, you are. I, I logged right on in Traverse City and Mackinac when I was like a young man. That was one of my very first jobs. Is I spent all winter out there logging, and that was a rough winter. I joined the Marine Corps after that, and I thought it was like the nicest, easiest job in the world comparing to, compared to logging in northern Michigan all winter. Delaware, Washington, Maryland, Las Vegas. Maryland, Las Vegas, Delaware. 
welcome, welcome, welcome. Stockholm, Sweden. I never got to go to Stockholm. I love Sweden, though. Sweden's one of the prettiest countries on earth, guys. That is it. What a beautiful place. That funnest road trip in the world was driving down the Swedish coast and seeing all the flowers. You guys have, like, I don't, what do you call your um, flowers over there in Sweden? The, the yellow, I mean, they're real small. It's like a sunflower, but very, very small. And when you guys are all harvesting them during the blooming season, I got to do that road trip. And man, that was gorgeous. I drove from Norway to Norway down the coast and um, left through Denmark. Yeah, I went into Denmark. Ah, hour south of the bridge. Man, that is beautiful out there. Idaho. Idaho, where in Idaho? I was born in St. Mary's, Idaho. Way up north, way up north. Texas? Welcome to the house, United States of Texas. Dude, I have to tell everybody from Texas, this is one of my favorite things about the Marine Corps and probably my deployment to Iraq. I worked with a lot, of, I got to work with a lot of kind of cool people and random teams and whatnot. But one thing, um, one group of people that always had a special um, patch on their shoulder were Texans. And we'd always work with locals that couldn't figure out where the Texans were from. They were trying to figure out what country they were from. And so we used to always just call them the United States of Texas because no matter, they were all American, but they'd always wear that Texas flag. So I always loved those guys. I think we could have won any war with just those guys. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm about to pour a funky little design here. I'm gonna try to do a very three-dimensional marble here, guys. A really 3D marble. <laughs> You know what? It's, I'm going to do this over here. It's called wraps. Yes. Rock Slayer, dude, that's all I'm really thinking about. I could give a damn about this epoxy. I care about my tummy right now. Rock Slayer and your friends. Thank you for Rock Slayer. If, if I'm still just screwing off like an idiot in here in like 10 more minutes, yell at me. Tell me to get out there. All right. Um, check the link in the bio up on top here, and um, you can see all our class dates and class schedules right there. And we have a class every single month. Um, I believe the next class coming up is that casting. Mm -hmm. I believe next month, the class in two and a half, three weeks, is going to be um, casting. We're actually going to do a really cool project, a couple. Some I can't say on TikTok because you guys kick me off the air when I do awesome stuff. Kind of sad, sad when I can't do fun things because I'll just get counseled on here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it really PC, but whoever shows up to the casting class is going to get to do some fun things. So, All totally legal in the U.S., by the way. All right, now. Oh wow, dude, congratulations. And sounds fun. I would love to be spend some time over in Sweden again. <laughs> Matt Dick, you know how I work this thing. Everybody if what's Matt Dick's page name right now? Lakeside Epoxy Creations. Lakeside Epoxy Creations. Everybody go check out Lakeside Epoxy Creations. I hope there's somebody actually watching Matt Dick. I'm sorry I'm not hotter, so I can't get more guys to your channel, but um, dude's a gangster and does amazing work, and everybody should definitely hit the follow. I don't know that I should do a ton more to that. I'm not hating it right now. So I might torch it real fast, run back and check on my steak. 
And if we still don't like it in 10 minutes, we might do something else to it. Yeah, let that settle. Let that just, let's just build a piece of marble out of this. And leave it be. I'll probably let the a few more air bubbles come to the top. We have a ton of clear in here, so we have tons of three-dimensional aspect, but we'll let the bubbles come up to the top. Um, now, I'm gonna run back out and check my steak, so be sure to hit the follow button, and we're gonna, we're gonna be ready to eat here in a little bit. If you guys were here, let's see, what time is it right now? Anybody out there, you have about 40 minutes to be here if you want some really good food. Hey. It's gonna be delicious. Monica, one of the best people in the building right there. I hope you all, if you ever come to a class, you get to work with Michael and Monica, luckily. All right, all right, all right. Now I gotta see. Do the typical Levi thing where I run inside, come back out, and it's all charcoal. Nope, it was perfect. Now, kind of my get me some sage up on there, a little bit of flavor in each one of the steaks. Sorry, that one only gets one, he's not as cool. Yeah, maybe I'll steal one of these guys and put them over there. There we are. Yes, with a mixing. Some minced garlic. No, this is not all kick ass like a clove. I meant to get cloves, guys. But leave, I got lazy at the last second. I actually wanted to just make sure I actually showed up and got the steak cooked for everybody. But say, sorry, it is rosemary. I'm sorry. This is kind of my stupid trick. I do this almost on all my steaks. I do this, I do a lot of cooking over campfires. And this is kind of a fail-safe method, except then at this point, I usually put all the potatoes on the bottom of a pan and put the steaks on top at that point. So. Oh yeah. Whew. Those potatoes are not cold. Busted one, my busted tater. Those are always the ones I eat. I always like, I'm so competitive. I want everything to look so pretty for everybody when I cook for groups. You don't want the broken potato that didn't look right. Um, a little bit of avocado oil. It's gonna really just help all that melt down into there. And now the big thing is just our patience that we need to truly have. salted corn going here. Now get this back warm. Stop being like Levi and leaving it open. And then, oh, sh no barbecue. No barbecue is a barbecue if you can't grab a grilled jalapeno out of here. So you gotta, you gotta toss some jalapenos down in here. And if you want that skin to pop right off and be all beautiful, don't be afraid to put a little oil on that as well. And I, you know what? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know a lot of tricks about cooking that I don't know. So thank you for being patient and not totally mocking me. But dude, I do, I do love cooking. So show up. Let me know what you want to see me cook. If you'd rather not see me cook, tell me what you want to eat when you show up to a class. That's what I meant. So 
if you come to our class, what do you want to eat? Because I don't mind. I'll, I will buy a lot of steak or buffalo. My little girl's favorite animal is buffalo, my older daughter. So I got her a bunch of buffalo meat, and she actually is super excited. So The cheese, I think I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on some flatbread and do some garlic flatbread and cheese patties. So, but, um, And Joe... Joe Beth made bacon wrapped asparagus that I cannot wait to see, but I just don't want to overheat it too soon. So I want to let this kind of grill down on its own for another little while. And now I think I'm going to lower the temp on the grill. I've been leaving it up a little bit warm. It's been, a, it's been around 390, 380. Um, I'm going to turn it down to 400 degrees. You know what? This, right now, this isn't a class. Right now, I'm just cooking for, for my team. So if they love it and they think I did a good enough job, then I'll definitely cook for you guys. So, and I hope you guys come and join the class. Remember, hit the follow button. I don't know, I don't know who, how many people we even have watching or anything. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to get everybody and see if they want to eat here in a little bit. But thank you most of all just for watching the live, learning how to do epoxy. Please be grateful in your life. Have an amazing weekend. And um, I'll see you guys on Monday. Kill a pedophile.